really tough sail from Porto down to here where we blew out the spinnaker. How'd that happen? Uh, more on that later. <laughs> This moment's been, uh, it, it, with this boat, the first hint of it was almost four years ago. Two and a half years ago, I committed and placed the order. And uh, yeah, it took, took that long to get the boat made. There was a whole pandemic between here and there. Just a tremendous amount of effort and work to get the boat completed and provisioned and crew ready. And now we're about to cast off and sail 500 miles to Portugal. Um, We've sailed 12 miles on this boat so far. So that's, I'm a little scared. I'm a little scared, I'm a, it's a little fun, a little scary, it's a little bold. Yeah, it should be good. I think tonight's gonna be wavy and colder than snot. And so that's gonna be unpleasant. But then after that, I think it'll be smooth sailing. All right, let's get going. Kind of getting pushed into the bay and we want to be able to get, we want to go west the wind, wind is coming from the west and we don't want to have to go in straight into the wind to get around the cape so we want to try and get as west as we can okay he's happier than dolphin amazing. Crossing the Bay of Biscay was, I believe, kind of uneventful for us. There were a number of fishing boats, some, you know, commercial traffic, but uh, we didn't really have any issues. It's traditionally known as being some rough weather. It really wasn't. It was just gray and cloudy, and uh, it was a good chance for us to um, kind of learn the ropes, as it were, the initial uh, launch crew, the November crew. Good man. Yeah. It's a sunny day. Yeah. We're heading south. It's getting warmer every moment. And Knocking yeah, off those the gorgeous, gorgeous sunrise. It was beautiful. Lots of windmills everywhere. Yeah. Kind of cool. Wow. I didn't see that one in there. The coast of Portugal is gorgeous. It is. What'd you say? The coast of Portugal is gorgeous. Nice. That is Unbelievable. Cool. You got Big, great water mist out in there. the valleys. Ooh. Castles on the hill. Windmills. Life doesn't suck. It's not suck. We left Porto about 10 o'clock or maybe 9.30. Um, and as you can may or may not be able to see here on the AIS, these are all fishing boats. And there's a couple of anchored um, container ships and more fishing boats. It is just fishing boats fishing everywhere. Fishing boat bonanza. There's like an entire fleet of them. I don't know if this we will get show to dodge up on them. the screen, but like let's let's take a quick pan of the horizon. It is just lights everywhere. There's there boats everywhere. It's really hard to sail through this. Oh well. There's a lot of dodging. It looks like we're actually outside most of the fleet at this point. So yeah. hopefully the wind will pick up and then we'll actually be able to sail. We just raced the spinnaker in. 23 knots of wind. 23 knots of wind. All right, let's see here. What do we got? That's our speed over ground. We've got, uh, it's, I, we don't have the speed on that one, but um, we just topped out at 17 knots speed over ground. It's down a little boat bit speed. right now. Oh, the boat speed. Yeah, boat speed, not just, speed over ground. Just after sunrise, we're trying to make tracks to Nazare. It kind of was slow going overnight. We're gonna make up that time today. It's wicked out here. What do we have, like? And we're fine, Chicago Spinnaker. Four meters of swell. Five meters, maybe? I'd say, four, I'd say three. Three? <laughs> Felt like four. <laughs> <laughs> how'd you do, how'd you feel about that? Awesome. You rounded up? You wanna describe what that was like? It was very frightening. <laughs> how far over were you healed? I, I couldn't tell. Over, it had to be 30 or 30. I think it was 40. 40? Yeah. yeah. It was, I couldn't control the sheet. The tow rail was in the water. Yeah. 
So now we're going to surf into Nazare. Yeah, we're doing all right. We on course? That's what you always wanted. Are we going to hit one of those waves? Maybe. Keith jumped too. I just woke up. <laughs> How you doing? I was getting rocked to sleep and all of a sudden I, was, I yeah, needed I was, yelling. I was asleep until there was some screaming, but uh, uh, somebody just kept pulling. Yeah. I was trying to wake myself up so I could get up here. Uh, yeah, it's amazing when you get sleep. We got a quicker. <laughs> oh, the wind speed is on there. It's over 20 knots. 21. Oh, this will get us there in a hurry. A really tough sail from Porto down to here where we blew out the spinnaker. How'd that happen? Uh, more on that later. <laughs> My heart, it's too soon. Too it's soon. Too soon. I can't talk about it yet. But everyone was safe. Everyone was safe. Um, we had to cut away the spinnaker because the rig might have been in danger. And so we, we cut away the spinnaker, which was a hard decision to make. We did it. Um, interestingly, North Cell is, is on the case of repairing the spinnaker. It's in seven pieces. So I'm impressed that they say they can fix it. About, uh, I'd say 160, 170 miles away from the shore of mainland Europe. We've got 26 knots of wind. We're trying to go downwind, but uh, reaching is more fun, so we're doing a little bit of that. And uh, we're topping out around 17 knots of boat speed, which uh, for, the, for anyone playing at home is somewhere between crazy fast and ridiculous. I'd like to introduce you to our PFDs, our personal flotation devices. Anytime a crew comes up on top, uh, we put on our vest and clip in. So what does that mean? The vest looks like a small compact thing, doesn't look like much, makes it easy to do your work, put on over follies, things like that. But the secret is that there is a self-inflating mechanism that is water activated. So if you're in the water, this automatically instantly inflates and keeps you above the water. There's also a man overboard beacon strapped in here. There's all kinds of stuff happening, but that is water activated as well and will ping your location to the boat. As well as handy dandy whistle, if you can get to it in the water. Other fine stuff, chapstick, Sharpie for marking lines. Everybody's personal best uh, has their own options. But before that, it's more important to just not fall off the boat. So how do we do that? We have what's called a tether. Every vest has them. Uh, some have two lines, some have one. It's uh, anytime you're doing work in the foredeck, in the cockpit, anytime you're above deck, we clip in. So to do that, we have a number of spots on the boat. Easiest is the jack lines, which run from bow to stern. You clip in and you're done. So then you can pull against that while you're pitching and trying to do your work. And then you walk yourself back to the next connection point, grab your next tether, clip in, take it off, and you're in the cockpit. Easy peasy, except when it's not. I'm a family nurse practitioner by trade and education. I currently work as an orthopedic surgery nurse practitioner in Chicago. In preparation for this voyage, I created a, a spreadsheet of the most common bacterial and viral diseases that people can encounter abroad, as well as like in close circumstances. So like say people who go to summer camp or who are involved like at a health club, uh, because we wouldn't have any access to drugs or any diagnostic equipment while we were at sea. But I came prepared for the worst. I brought a staple gun, a suture kit, some uh, splinting materials, and antibiotics in the case that someone broke a finger or a bone or had a very deep laceration. 